They may be extremely comfortable, fit like a glove, or feel similar to your much-loved slippers, but at some point, you are gonna have to part with your favorite pair of trainers. And yes, I know, knowing when to say goodbye is hard. But you need to think about yourself and your body. In all seriousness, replacing your trainers at the correct time is vital too soon, and it could be costly to your bank balance, too late, and you run the risk of injury. So today, I'm going to be covering the key points that you need to consider when assessing the wear of your running shoes. It can be obvious, sometimes your shoes might have bits hanging off them. If so, please put them in the bin now. In actual fact, you should have done it long ago. It's when your shoes actually look okay at first glance that it's hard to know, and it's when you need to take a closer look and put them through their paces. Now, obviously, a lot of science and research goes into making running shoes, as David Jewell, an expert in the industry, certainly knows. Well, I rang him to pick his brains on how running shoes actually wear out and what as runners we need to actually look for. So yeah, David, just first off, like what are the, as a runner, what should you look for to start with in your shoe when, to know if it's worn out? Well, the, the first thing is, as long as you're consistent in your running, if you stay consistent in your running, you should look at how your body feels after a run. That's the most important thing because materials are very difficult to tell if they wear out. So the, the only material that wears out, and then I'll say this, is if the, if the bottom of the shoe, if the outsole wears out, you're, you're way past the rest of the shoe being worn out because the outsole is very hard. And that's the one thing the brands test all the time is abrasion resistance. So they are constantly looking for a, an outsole that is much, um, much more abrasive resistance to the road itself. So if you wear that down, then the rest of the shoe is completely worn out. The midsole itself is completely worn out. So what about when you see like, you know, some mid foam, sometimes you can see those like little micro kind of almost little cracks through it. Does that show anything or is that just purely it's sort of wearing out in a different way or is that it's past it if you see that or is it very something completely different? That's, that's fairly normal in a running shoe, specifically on um, EVA. It will, uh, it will show those cracks even after it could be after two runs you'll start to see those cracks that's that's kind of normal if it's polyurethane and this um polyurethane based which is like uh adidas boost or ever run from Saucony, those foams over time over long periods of time they will begin to rot and if you see if you see any kind of cracks in those in that midsole, it's you're way past it. It's being worn out because it is actually falling apart. It's rotting away. So you actually need to know what your shoe is kind of made of. So EVA cracks don't worry is kind of the basic term, but polyurethane you do Correct. worry. Is that the? Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. you, you um, would worry. Yeah. And, and what about when shoes have air or gel or pods? Is there any difference between the, the different styles of different manufacturers with sort of wear time and, and what to look for? They will tell you there's a difference between them, but there isn't much of a difference. They, in terms of durability, those pieces are very durable because they are, they are wrapped in a silicone base. They are, they're super durable. The problem is that they're also encased in EVA. So the, the rest of the midsole is still EVA. And although EVA is a great material, it feels good when you run in it, it also um, compresses over time. And so that's, that's, the, that's what happens when a shoe wears out is that that foam compresses down to, it's no longer protecting you. It doesn't matter if there's an air sole unit in there, if the foam around is totally compressed, then the shoe's no good anymore. And what about that change you feel when you've like got a new pair of shoes and the first few runs they feel like amazing. You are running on clouds, that kind of feeling. And then say run three, four, when they're obviously still very new shoes, they no longer have that quite that same feeling. What's happening there? Well, there's a, there's a little uh, secret that the brands do um, to entice you to buy their shoe in the first place. So the, the picture is you go into a running store and you try on three different shoes and you, you buy the one that feels the best, okay? 
That little trick is what they put inside the shoe, this insole. Okay, they can make that insole super soft. They can make it feel really good once you put your shoe, once you put your foot into the shoe. What happens though is after three or four runs, that insole is is flat. It's no good anymore. So that feel that you have the first few runs is because the insole is still um, puffy and feels really good, but it flattens out really quick because it's really thin okay. and they spent so much time making it soft that soft things tend to harden faster. Okay. Um, <laughs> and you talked about prolonging the shoe life and obviously I'm mixing them last longer because you're not wearing them as much, but is there anything else you can do? Does it matter if your shoes get wet? Do you need to dry them quickly? Should you dry them slowly? Should they stay out of the sun? Is there anything you can actually do to prolong the life of your running shoes? Yes. So definitely if they get wet, get them dry. And so you can, again, back to the insole, you can pull the insole out and it'll dry faster if you do that. If you're, when I travel specifically to the UK and it's raining all the time, um, <laughs> I, uh, I use newspaper and I stuff the shoes with newspaper so that they dry very quickly. Um, cause the newspaper, the, the, the water will go to the, the thing that absorbs the fastest and newspaper will absorb much faster than the, the materials themselves. So I do that. Um, definitely do not put them in heat. Don't, don't put them in the sun. Don't put them, you know, in the winter, don't, uh, put them over the, the air vents. Do not put them in heat because heat will deform the midsole. EVA does not react great to heat. And you can notice that in the summer. When it's, a, when it's really hot in the summer, you will find your shoes feel softer. And that's because they are softer. L likewise, in the winter, they feel much harder because in the, in the winter, the, the midsole will freeze. Yeah, finally, sort of putting you on the spot a little bit, but can you give a ballpark figure of mileage? Because I know there's various ones out there by the sort of industry that are recommended <laughs> and they vary from brand to brand, but can you give a sort of uh, an overall, say for a, a, a medium weight training shoe and then a sort of racing shoe of, of what would be the ballpark figure for an average runner? Okay, for an average runner, you, you should be out of a out of a training shoe, you should be able to achieve three to 400 miles and a lot of that has to do with the size of the runner, okay? How much pressure your body is putting on the shoe itself. So that's why it's a range three to 400. For a racing shoe, a, a typical racing shoe, it's probably half of that, probably 150 miles max. What runners do, so how do you know if it's three or 400 miles? One, runners, if they have a log, they can track that. But I have, um, I've seen runners actually write on the side, on the midsole of the shoe, how many times they've run in the, how many times they've run in the shoe? That's that's very old school. Um, Strava, if you go on to Strava, you can log which shoe you ran in, so it will tell you. And I think it's really important that the first question is, what are the signs that a shoe is worn out? If you get to 300 or 350 miles, just replace your shoes. There, it's a it's a fairly inexpensive piece of equipment if you look at it. I mean, the running shoes are not that expensive. But if you try to extend the life of your shoe and get injured, that's really expensive. That's, that's costly more than just money going to the, the physio. That's, that's costly mentally. So I say if you get to that 350, 400 miles, just replace your shoes. Huge amount covered there by David. And like he said, we're all different as are our running shoes. But the biggest point being, you need to listen to your body, which I can certainly relate to. He did touch on the fact that age of your shoes doesn't really matter unless you've kept them in a the cupboard for a long time. It's more the fact of what type of shoe they are. And interestingly, what the midsole is made of, which is something I hadn't considered in the past. 
And he also touched on the fact that obviously a heavier runner will wear their shoes out more quickly. But it also depends on what type of run training you're doing and what surfaces you're running on. So say you're doing a lot of really intense hard work on asphalt compared to maybe someone who just goes for more easy jogs running along on the sand or a soft surface. And you're going to put less pressure through that midsole. So in theory, your shoes could last longer that way too. And then you also need to take into account the uppers. Maybe if you've got wide feet, you see the seams going at the side. I personally used to see my shoes wearing out at the front where my big toe would protrude through. Basically, it's probably a sign that you've done enough running that the midsole is also going to be compromised. So take it as a sign if they're looking holy or things are falling apart on the top, underneath is probably also gone. But it is a fine line because if your shoes are just a little bit muddy or smelly or they don't quite look as sort of sparkling new as when you first got them, that doesn't mean the midsole is worn out. And I know shoe manufacturers are going to be pushing to sell their shoes and actually urging you to replace them. But think about it beforehand and do try to log those miles because that will be really helpful. And when you do take the plunge and put aside your favorite pair of shoes, try to do it with a bit of an overlap if you can. So when you've bought your new shoes, if you can start to wear them around the house a little bit and then maybe just take them for one run, alternate with the old pair just for the first few days or so until they're properly worn in. Even if they are the exact same make and same model, there can be some discrepancies when they've come from the factory, so it's just worth considering that. I do hope that has helped you to gauge the wear of your running shoes a little more. Well, let me know what sort of shoe buyer you are. Are you someone who gets a brand new pair out of the box as soon as the last ones get a little bit muddy? Or are you the other end of the spectrum like me and you wear them until they're dying and then you retire them to trail running shoes and then eventually they become dog walking shoes or painting shoes? Yes, I am guilty and please do not copy me on that one. I'm not recommending it. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Give us a like and remember you can check out our social media channels and give those a follow too.